Hey guys, it's Man89 here and welcome to my honest review on PES 2020. It's developed and published by Konami and it came out September 12th on PC, Xbox One and PS4. So PES is a football simulation game that comes out every year just like most sports games. And with this review, we're gonna try and answer an important question. Is this year's edition worth buying or does it just feel like a DLC? So without further ado, let's start this review with the graphics. Keep in mind this is the PS4 version you're looking at and as you can see, the graphics are pretty good. Player faces look quite realistic, especially the ones that were scanned, cause you know, the not so popular players look like random people. And I really like the lighting system cause I think it's great and it makes stadiums, actually not just stadiums, it makes everything look so much better. Now when it comes to the animations, they are way better than before, that's a fact, especially when taken individually, even though some goalkeeper animations are just bad. I mean, no keeper goes flying like this in real life, certainly not on penalties. Apart from that though, what really bothers me is the transitional animations and the facial animations too, they're not smooth and they're not natural either. For me that's the only thing that prevents PES from looking 100% real, so hopefully they'll figure it out on next gen consoles, cause otherwise we're gonna end up having some creepy looking players. Now when it comes to the performance you're gonna get 60 FPS in game and 30 FPS during the replays, I didn't have any frame rate issues whatsoever so that's good. Moving on to the sound, I don't like the soundtrack that much. I'm not I'm not saying most of the songs on this game are bad, but I wanted some more popular stuff with more famous singers, bands, etc. And let's not even talk about the commentary. Actually, let's talk about it, cause it's the same, below average, super repetitive commentary that doesn't sound professional at all. The commentators still say some goofy ass shit, and I even tried English, French, and Brazilian Portuguese commentary, and none of them were good enough. Now when it comes to the atmosphere, crowd chants, and all that stuff, it's not bad at all even though in my opinion they could have taken it to the next level and let me give you an example on how they could have done that so you get what I mean. When Ronaldo scores, or actually let's say it the way it's meant to be said, so in Portuguese, when Cristiano Ronaldo scores and he does his su celebration, which by the way just means yeah, cause si means yes in Portuguese. Anyways, don't forget to leave a like for some more shitty Portuguese lessons from a random Tunisian guy. Back to what I was saying, when Cristiano does his celebration, the crowd does it with him, so when you watch the game on TV, you hear it. But on this game, you don't hear shit. Anyways, I'ma let you listen to the game audio for like 15 seconds before we move on to the gameplay. Now when it comes to the gameplay, starting with the good stuff, it's realistic and accurate enough to allow you to play the way you want. I really like the player physics and most importantly the ball physics, cause passing the ball around, taking shots, you know, first touches, deflections, all that stuff, it just feels really good. Now the second good thing I want to talk about is the new licenses. PES 2020's got Juve, Bayern, Man United etc, but still not enough when compared to the opposition, aka FIFA. Oh and for those of you who play Master League, I guess you're gonna be happy to know that there are new cutscenes which make the whole thing look uh, way better, but still not enough, which takes me to the bad stuff. Content wise, PES 2020 doesn't have enough. I mean my club has been slightly improved but nothing new when it comes to become a legend for example and all around I think the game has a bad presentation. The user interface, the menus, the content, the absence of voice acting during in-game cutscenes and the lack of licenses even though I know they can't compete with EA when it comes to licenses and I don't really care about that stuff. But when your slightly improved user interface is still outdated and your online experience kinda sucks, I mean depending on the platform you're on, finding an opponent can take some time. In my case for example, I'm on PS4 and I don't know why the game kept on matching me with Brazilians, Colombians and sometimes even Chinese players instead of just matching me with Europeans so I can play without any lag. I didn't have this problem with PES 2019 so I really don't know what's going on. Uh, next thing I want to talk about is the ref decisions. Some ref decisions are pretty bad and you know they stop the game unnecessarily, especially for offside situations where the player has zero chance to get the ball and the ref still stops the game and ruins the counter attack. 
Let's go back to the good stuff now. Cause if you're gonna be inviting some friends over to spend the night playing some PES, you're gonna enjoy the realistic, satisfying gameplay that rewards the best player. Now let's move on to the replayability, which is heavily gonna depend on the game mode you're gonna be playing. Locally or online, with your friends, once or twice a week, I think that's the best way to play this game, cause you can play it until the next one comes out and you won't get bored of it. But, if you're gonna be playing my club, you should know it doesn't have enough content to keep you entertained for 10 months or so. When it comes to the fun factor, the game is definitely fun to play. Even against the AI, I still have fun and play game after game without getting bored. In my opinion though, my club isn't that fun cause you're gonna be spending some time looking for opponents and navigating through menus that are far from being aesthetically pleasing. But as soon as I'm back on the pitch, I just have a blast. Now last but not least, when it comes to the value for money, 60 bucks for PES 2020, I don't know, if you're gonna be making the switch this year from FIFA to PES, then the game is definitely worth every penny, cause everything is gonna be new to you. Now on the other hand, if you've been buying every PES game for a while now, then you already know it's gonna feel like a big DLC. So if you're broke, like me, then you could either wait for the game to be on sale in 2 or 3 months, or just wait until PES 2020 Lite is released. For those of you who don't know, Konami releases a free to play Lite version of the game like 3 months after the paid version is released, which is pretty cool. In my humble opinion, all PES needs to attract a new audience and finally sell more copies is enough content to keep people interested in coming back every week. And they could have easily done that by straight up copying FIFA Ultimate Team, but they didn't. I mean they tried and they failed. They still slightly improved their game though, and in my opinion it has the best gameplay. That's why I'ma give PES 2020 an 8.5 out of 10. Special thanks to buygames.ps for providing me with the game and therefore making this video possible. And if you don't know what buygames.ps is, it's a really good website that sells PS4 and Xbox One games for cheap, so check it out if you're interested. Anyways, that's gonna be it for this review, I hope you found it useful. Leave a like if you did and please check out my other videos, I make game reviews, comparison videos and top 10 videos that I'm sure you'll find useful. By the way, I'm obviously gonna review FIFA 20 when it's out and I'll also make a special episode of uh, Versus where I'll compare PES 2020 and FIFA 20 to see which is better this year, so stay tuned. It's been Hitman89, see you guys very soon.